Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Bill, what we're talking about today is Gen Z's and millennial home ownership rate plummets to four years low. So basically, the younger generation makes sense. Though. Are having a hard time. Yep. Okay. Buying the house and it's a four year low, and we could pretty much say why it's happening right. now. But we'll read the article and we'll go over it. Yep. But one thing I want to talk about is. All my other inspections I have done recently, maybe the last four, three out of four were cash buyers, and they're all older people. So they're moving from, say, Connecticut, New Jersey, New York, and uh -huh. they're coming here, and they're paying cash for the homes. Right. They're selling one home, buying another home. Right. That's one benefit of the older generations. Right. Millennials and Gen Xs don't have that opportunity, because mm -hmm. this would be their first house. Right, like those that group that you just referenced, that may have been their first house. Right, so 30 years ago. 30 years ago, so they've cashed in the equity, and now they're moving in. That's it's that's why home ownership is generally, your net worth is higher. Like if we sold our house, uh -huh. hypothetically, we could take the, because we're in them a long time, we could take the cash and buy another house. And right. So do I really care about interest rates? No. No, no that group, that segment doesn't care about interest rates because it doesn't affect them because they're not, they're either, their mortgage is so low or they're not taking a mortgage out at all. Right, and then what about, they're gonna say, well, what about insurance? So what happens here, at least in Florida, insurance could be like six, 7,000. I've been running into people, I'm not an insurance agent, but they've been getting what's called a la carte insurance. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't care about wind. The house is hurricane proof, you know, right. impact windows, good roof, straps, all that stuff. I care about fire, theft, and liability. Mm -hmm. So they're getting that. So instead of paying six, $7,000 a year, they're paying 1200 Or they might be going what we call bare and right. not going without insurance. Right. Which I don't recommend. I don't necessarily recommend. <laughs> I don't recommend it. Yeah, fire, theft, liability at a bare minimum, I think, is uh, prudent here. So let's talk about millennials and, and Gen Zs and and see what the article says, see if we agree or disagree. In the meantime, do me a favor. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Give it a thumbs up and share it. Bill, why don't you start us off? All right. Home prices are still high and so are mortgage rate. Well, that's no secret. Yep. <laughs> we knew that. They're saying there's gonna be a price cut in September, but even if they cut the price, the rate a quarter percent, I don't think it's gonna do anything. <sighs> it's, it's just, it's gonna help, but not. Right. It's, it's a couple hundred bucks a month. Right. Uh, it says, the kids aren't all right. Hmm. The home ownership rate for people younger than 35 years old, who are generally younger millennials and older Gen Zers, fell to its lowest point in more than four years in the second quarter data from the US Census Bureau released uh, yesterday. Home ownership for households 35 and younger is still higher than pre-pandemic, but down from pandemic era highs when low mortgage rates enabled home purchasing. A realtor.com analysis. Well, that makes sense. All right. Yeah. So it's still up from pre pandemic. Okay. But it's down over the pandemic years comparatively. Well, during the pandemic years, we call those the unicorn years. Yep. And everything was not normal. Right. Remote work, you exactly. know, freaking government cutting you people checks. Right. You know, people's people's savings were actually going up during the, the pandemic years because supply and demand. There was, I wanted to buy some stuff that I couldn't buy. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get some furniture, and literally they told me I had to wait six months to a year to get a couch. Right. Now, if I go into the same store, I say, "Hey, I want that couch." They're like, "Oh, we we can deliver it tomorrow." Yeah. Or if you got a truck, you can put it in today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's we're getting back to normal there, but no, it made this this first opening article kind of makes sense to you know over because the interest rates were a lot lower so you didn't have to make as much money to get into a home let's see what they say the pandemic so. fueled the, the housing boom mostly because mortgage rates were lowest they've been they were they're like it's crazy yeah and you know if you're gonna wait for that you're gonna be waiting a very very long time right so but also because people could work from anywhere because of that, home prices skyrocketed. They've risen roughly 50% since the start of pandemic. Let's talk about that. Prices have been ri risen 50% oh, yeah. in a lot of places. Yep. And 
finding a job, working from home, paying good money, for the for the fun of it, we looked. Right. You know, and you you did some research into that. Yeah. What did you find? Is it easy to find that job working from home? No. <laughs> Everybody thinks it's easy to get that job. And I noticed too that certain things had little buzzwords that, you know, remote work, but you still had to go to the office. It just allows you to have some remote days. So you're still going to the office, so it wasn't like you could go to another state. You know, you still had to drive somewhere. And the research that I found was, yeah, but some of it's based on commission or sales. Oh my God, yeah. That, yeah, so like, all right, work. you get up, you make phone calls from your house, you be a salesperson. Yeah. They consider that remote work, but. Right, and, and it did, I get that, that is remote work, but it's still just, it's just phone sales. You're just calling out of a database. Yeah, but then, Inflation reached a four-decade high, and the Federal Reserve raised rates multiple times, indirectly bumping up the mortgage rates. The combo has been an unaffordable killer. That is the killer for Gen Zs and Millennials. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Because if you're paying, say, you have a $200,000 mortgage, we'll keep it simple, and you're paying 2.5%, 3%, and now you're paying, say, 7%, that's a huge, it can, yeah. huge, huge increase in your monthly. Well, you've more than doubled just your, 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 you know, your interest rate, your interest on there. So yeah, the average 30 year thing. fixed daily mortgage rate is 6.7 at the, this time of when this was written. And the weekly one is slightly higher. It's related in this manner. The Fed met today, but interest rates unchanged at the highest it's been in 23 years. So think about it. The rates that the Fed set is the highest in 23 years. Mm -hmm. And they raised it so fast that, you know, a lot of younger people are moving back in with their parents to save money. Or look at the inspections we did, the sales you're doing, brother and sister are buying a home together, boyfriend right. and girlfriend are buying together, yeah. or the parents are lending the money. Mm -hmm. It's like a joint effort now. Yeah, yeah, it's the, you're starting to see that more, more and more. Either way, in the second quarter of this year, the total homeownership rate for the country was relatively unchanged at 65.6%. It's lower than the rate in the early months of the pandemic, and it's declined steadily since then. Fewer people are buying and selling homes, and last year alone, existing home sales fell to their lowest point in close to three decades. That's accurate. That's accurate? That's accurate. But this year, we're starting to tick back up again. Let's see how the year pans out. We still got six months. I don't know. I think it's gonna be a rough six months. It could be a rough six months, but you know, if we start to see a little, t if, you know, every little bit helps. Actually, five months. You know, well, right. yeah, that's true. Four, we just, four, we just, four and a half months. We switched over the year, <laughs> well, however you want to call it. We're in the middle of the year. In June, existing home sales dropped five point four percent from a year earlier, all while the median existing home price topped another all-time high at four hundred and twenty-six thousand nine hundred dollars. That's nuts. That's that's a crazy, crazy number. Yep, the median. But we've talked about this too. That explain what a median is. Is yeah, the median is the you take the all the sales in the so you take a million-dollar house and a hundred-thousand-dollar house, and then they put a line in the middle. That's your median sales price. This is how they do a lot of the stats. So. It's not the wrong way to do it. It's just you have to pay attention to the article and whether it says average or median, because mm -hmm. they'll show two completely different numbers. Mm -hmm. um, but most stats are built off medians. So it's no secret that home ownership rates are among younger cohorts is falling. Just consider the salary needed to afford a starter home has almost doubled since the pandemic to almost $76,000 a year. And not to mention million dollar starter homes are more common than ever. Maybe not here, but million dollar starter home. <laughs> I don't Maybe know. that's the problem. <laughs> I don't know. Holy I, I, I don't. I don't believe that, that yeah, one. I, that one, I, I, I'm saying punk Pocono. What the Pocono? Pinocchio. P Pinocchio. <laughs> All right. Over the last couple of years, younger buyers have suffered the brunt of climbing prices and mortgage rates more than any other group. That's true said the report author Hannah Jones in a statement. Jones, a realtor, senior economic research and analysis. Many buyers under the age of 35 are the first time home buyers and therefore do not have the existing home equity to leverage into home purchases like many older generations do. That's what, that's what we were talking about at the beginning. Mm-hmm, right. Yeah, just you, you've, 
even you, you know you don't what I don't want people to think is that you if you, if you purchase a home you know we, we had this conversation the other day too you know you purchase a home if you think you're gonna make money and flip it in two or three years then you know it, if you might be barking up the wrong tree mm hmm there's you're probably more likely than not to you know not have enough money to do that right uh, there's always the unicorn and there's always the certain deal however if you're in it for the long haul that six eight ten year mark at least before you move again then you could build some equity in your first property and then you either put it up as a rental if you've got cash saved if you're lucky enough to do that or you leverage the equity that's in that property you sell it and then you buy another house and you upgrade and you just keep doing that tiny little leapfrog over and over again or what you could do is gen z stuff too is you could just buy instead of buying a house you could buy a townhouse or a condo yeah i don't recommend buying a condo in florida but depends on where the condos are and, and how many floors yeah and, and like, how old it is yeah yeah just but it's more the floors of the big one those floor the floors are the big one and uh explain what we're talking about yeah. some people so are like, what are you talking if you about? have three floors or above and it, it's a certain year old and you're within a certain distance from a major body of water you know whether it be a you know a river tributary or the you know the gulf in our case um your insurance rates will be higher because you have milestone reports and maintenance that you have to do and there's typically been deferred maintenance because of the tragedy down in miami so the government has said you have to do these things and have these engineers reports and then you have to have the money set aside to fix those things so you can't you, assessments have come because now the it's time to pay the piper you have to you have to have the money in in the in the account now for it so yeah it's expensive she continued saving for a down payment had has become increasingly challenging for both rents and home prices hovered near pandemic era highs Today's housing market asks a lot of buyers and younger buyers who earn lower wages, have less savings and don't have equity in an existing home, are less able to compete than older, more established buyers. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's 100% that's, true. But that's, and I, that's not going to change. That's, you're, you're hard pressed. I mean, younger people are getting higher and higher paying jobs, mm -hmm. you know, which is fantastic, but you're competing against another generation that has time in their jobs and makes more salary and has equity in a home. Sure. You know, so it's, it's not saying that it's an impossibility. It's just saying that that's just the fact of life. Yeah. And you're going to have to deal with that. And like I said, you'll have to be a little bit more strategic. Mm -hmm. It's especially till interest rates stabilize. I agree. But while the younger group saw their home ownership rate fall, on a quarter and yearly basis, some of the older generation saw their theirs rise. Two groups of people, 35 to 44 years old, and those between 45 and 54 years old, saw their home ownership rate increase for the uh, from the first to the second quarter of this year. Oh, okay, makes sense. Yeah, I it mean, really does. I don't think it's. I think it's going to be very difficult for the younger generation to buy homes until the rates do the rates do come down yeah yeah it's and it's not it is it is not necessarily just the younger generation it just depends on where you're at in your life you could be older and you know you could be on a fixed income you know you don't know everybody's situation is different mm -hmm. so it's it's not just this hard this or this you know we'll have to see but it does make it more difficult because typically like when i started in my career my, my first career before I retired, you know, it's like, I don't make what the guy that has 20 years on the job right. does, you know? And right. yeah, he may have a fantastic, beautiful house, but, and I can strive for that, but that's just, I have to work hard for it and wait. Yeah, there were different outcomes by income, as you might anticipate in the quarter, households that made more than as the same as the medium income saw an increase in home ownerships rate to 79.2. Makes sense. Mm-hmm from 78.8% in the first quarter of this year. However, households with incomes below the medium saw their home ownership rate fall from the first quarter to the second to 52.1, which also makes sense. Yep. It fell from a year earlier too, as home prices and mortgage rates remain elevated. Yeah, the higher the, the more the, the mortgage payment is, the less home you could afford. Right, of course. It's that, That's like really, really basic, Right. you know, 
Okay, as home prices and mortgage rates remain elevated, financing a home purchase will remain prohibitively expensive for many households, especially those earning less than a national medium income, Realtor.com said. Yeah, makes sense, right? Still, what to, what to know things you could do. Home prices inflation is slowing. Okay, they're saying it's slowing. Mortgage rates are coming down very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. And inventory is increasing. But that isn't saying that housing will be affordable again. It just might not get worse. What do you think? Rates, you know, they do their normal bump up, bump down, bump up, bump down. You know, the little up, little down. Like right now, you know, when we're recording this, they're down a touch. But, you know, they could go right back up again in a couple days mm -hmm. because of, you know, global stuff going on. Um, Inventory is going up, particularly in our area. Nationally, it's going up a little bit too, mm -hmm. it, but it's starting to slow somewhat because, you know, it's always lagging data too. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to remember that there's lagging data. So, uh, but at the end of the day, I still stick to the if you because I, I we both have a lot of interactions with a lot of different realtors, yeah. um, and people are still buying and selling homes. You know, there's just more sitting on the market, but the more competitive you are, the days of just throwing your house up on the market for sale and not, you know, having to worry about maybe throwing some paint on it, you know, doing a weekend project, cleaning up the yard, things to kind of spruce it up. Kind of like, you know, you take your car in to trade it in. Everybody always washes it, deep cleans it, makes it look super nice because you want the most money for it. And housing is really no different. We're not saying you have to renovate the kitchen, but you have to think about those things. But do you, do you think that Gen Z and millennials, the younger generation, is going to get any easier for them in the short term to buy a home? Nothing for anybody is going to get easier in the short term. Period. But for older generations that are just selling one house and buying another house with prices not increases increasing, it's not that bad for them. No, and it never has, but it's always been that way though. You know, it's, 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 that's just, that doesn't matter. Nothing affects, uh, very little affects those people, but the, you know, the millennials, Gen Z, they also are gonna have to think that they're not gonna just necessarily always walk into a brand new construction home and there'll be some concessions there, you know, because unfortunately what I see is people making concessions on where they live, driving out a little bit further because they need to get into a house and they don't wanna rent, I just think you touched it before, and I just I think in order for younger people to get into homes, they're gonna have to start off with a condo or a townhouse, yeah. and then fix it up or do something, yeah. then step up to a house, then go from a house to you know a bigger house. Right. Just keep keep climbing and right. and saving. Yeah. I think that's the way. I think these younger people that want to get into a three thousand square foot house right away that's five six hundred thousand today's rates is not realistic it's, it's, for most of them people. it's not and it, it it's not for them because it, i've worked with one client in particular and they've, they've changed their tune a little bit but you know their the bedroom for their you know toddler they want to make sure the bedroom was at least 15 by 15 because otherwise it was just not enough space for the top but i mean like but you don't lock the kid in there all day. So, you know what I mean? It's it's right. more realistic as to what, you know, you just got your first job and your spouse isn't working. So, yeah, but you wanna go buy a $700,000, $800,000 house. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It doesn't make I mean, sense It just at all. doesn't, I'm sorry. So that's my advice. I'm not a realtor, it's just my opinion. Go buy a condo first, buy, you know, if, if right. you, you know, buy a townhouse, buy a fixer up, or buy something a little bit out of the area that you want to buy that's a little more affordable. Right. Do things like that, but don't get yourself in trouble. Here's the rule of thumb that I'm a big believer in. Figure out what you're paying for rent. Say you're renting right now and say you're paying a thousand dollars a month for rent. Just keep it simple. Yep. But now you're gonna buy a house and that mortgage payment is gonna be $3,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So that's an extra $2,000 a month. What you should do is for six months, take that extra $2,000 and act like you're spending it on a mortgage and put it in a savings or something. Just every month, put $2,000 into a savings. And after the first or second month, you're like, well, I can't do it because I need to pay for this, this, and this, or I don't want to do it, or I can't afford it. You can't buy that house. Probably shouldn't be buying that house. Because at the end of the day, it's your money, and now you you know you can use that to do different things in your real estate transaction too. So it's and it's never bad to have savings, especially yeah. when you own a house. That's today's video. Do me a favor, 
If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It is so important to us and so greatly appreciated. Comment below, give it a thumbs up, share, and we will talk to you in the next one. See you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.